Hi guys, some days are just absolutely flipping awful and you've tried whatever you can and it's not working. So what do you do when it all goes completely pear-shaped and your plans are in tatters around your feet? How do you get yourself out of the fact that you're having a really rough time? And I get that, it happens to all of us and some things are really, really difficult. You can't change automatically the things that are happening around you, some situations you can't alter, but you can affect how you respond to them. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. My name is Sarah Jane Critchley. I'm the author of A Different Joy, The Parent's Guide to Living Better with Autism, Dyslexia, ADHD and more. It's that one, just in case you wondered. And this is what we're going to talk about today. So how do you reboot your day? You can't change it automatically, you can't change the big things, but what you can change is how you react to them. So what tools might you use? And please don't think for one minute that you do these and all of a sudden, bing, everything's fine and dandy and it's all wonderful. But you might just feel that little bit better, that little bit better. And isn't that worth aiming for? Isn't that something we all want to have? So here we go. Six ways to feel better today, to reboot your day. The first thing, like our lovely elephant here, is when the heavens have opened, the rains come down, you're in a really cruddy situation, you know it's going to be horrible. Sometimes it's not the right thing to do to just pretend it's not going to happen. You can't pretend it's not there. You can't pretend the struggle doesn't exist. You can't pretend that it's not something that's freaking you out and making you really miserable and actually life's just a bit rubbish. But you don't have to live in that bit. That doesn't have to be your story. That isn't the whole of your life. That is a tiny moment in time. So what can you do? You set a time frame around what you're experiencing. So I had a, a thing that happened yesterday that freaked me out completely. And I thought, I am just so done with this particular situation. I don't want to be in it. And I tried all the things I could and I just thought, hmm, it's not working. So what do I do? I said, right, I'm going to give myself precisely one hour to feel completely flipping miserable. And then I'm going to get up and I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something different. So set yourself a time frame. And the bigger the thing it is you're dealing with, the bigger a time frame you may need. And you may need to dip in and dip out. To, it doesn't have to be a, a once only thing. You come into it, you honour the struggle, you honour the fight, you agree that it's going to be hard. And actually, some things are difficult, but you don't have to be miserable about it all the time. So, set the time frame. It may be an hour, it may be a day, it may be a week. If you're grieving the loss of a family member, it's going to take years. But you don't have to live in that all the time. So give yourself a time period to experience the real feelings that you're experiencing because masking, blocking and denying isn't very healthy for the long term. It's a way of dealing with them for the short term, it's not a way of dealing with them for the long term. So explore, give yourself, honour yourself enough to give yourself that time, step into it, recognise it and then don't stay there, step out of it. So what next? Right, I've had enough. That's my hour done, finished. I'm gonna stop being so flirping miserable now. What do I do? Okay, here's some ideas for you. Number one, will it matter in two years time? I know that some of the things that have really, really upset me in being with my children and struggling with their education have been things that actually, in the long term, don't necessarily matter. So you could have a really bad meeting with a member of staff, or somebody may upset you in the supermarket, or you may run into another child who's doing absolutely brilliantly when your child's really struggling. All of those things can freak you out. The first thing to think about is, will this matter in the long term, in a week's time, two weeks time, 10 months time, two years time, 10 years time? In the span of a life, if you can't get perspective in the short term, go longer, go longer, go longer. In the span of a life, it won't matter. I'm very aware that in terms of schooling, we've freaked out about all sorts of different things. Actually, if you take a longer term view, it matters less. It feels like everything which school your child goes to at the time when you're applying to them. When you've actually got a place, it matters a whole lot less. So, 
Second thing, change your mind, change your reality. The way you react to the challenges that you face changes everything. I've been in situations that I did not want to have. Um, a particular example was when my father was actually dying and we had a really rough time and it was really difficult. But we decided that we were going to face that as a family and we were going to have as much fun as we possibly could in that scenario. I know that sounds weird. We laughed more than we've laughed in a long time and that was the best that our family had ever been. That changed that period from being all about disaster and death and pain and misery into something that was so beautiful. It gave me a huge gift. Change your mind. Change the way that you react to things. Change the way people react to you. It changes everything. Third thing. Talk to other people. Do not isolate yourself. When we get scared and we get frustrated and we get unhappy, there is a tendency in many, many of us, and I know I've done that, to just withdraw and you stop talking to people, you stop interacting with people, you stop sharing. You don't have a problem that somebody else hasn't faced. There are something like six billion, seven billion people on this planet. You can bet your bottom dollar somebody out there is going through the same things that you are. Share your experience, talk to other people, they can support you. It makes life so much easier to cope with. Now, number four, music, the great mood changer. Oh, I love music. Playlists can be your best friend. Choose the music that you like. And if you're having a little wallowy period, by all means, go for it, have a wallowy playlist. This is the playlist of music that I will sob my heart out to when I just can't take any more. This is my really angry playlist and I'm going to get up and going. This is my, okay, I'm gonna be happy now playlist. Choose the songs that you love or that you found that fit that mood and it will propel you faster than anything else you can think of. There's also a website called The Mighty for people who um, have chronic health conditions and mental health issues. They've got some fantastic playlists that have helped people through anxiety, depression and even helping them to come to terms with suicidality and to face another day because sometimes just one more day is an absolute triumph. The next one, walk outside in the fresh air. We need light, we need air and we need to breathe. When you're walking, you're taking breath deeper into your body. Your body needs oxygen. Oxygen is fuel. Get outside and walk. The other thing is that the repetitive movement, movement is great, repetitive movement is always good. Go for it. If you can find somebody to do it with, even better. If not, combine that with your music. That's fantastic. In our family, we love to plug in and, and do, a, do a stomp with music. It's fun, absolutely wonderful. Go for it. Try it. Highly recommend it. Number six, find a friend and have fun. You are allowed to talk to other people. You are allowed to find somebody that you enjoy doing things with. Maybe this person isn't the person next door. Maybe it is a friend that you've got um, online who likes playing the same sort of games that you do. Certainly for, for my boy, he loves playing games. He talks to his friends online. He laughs his head out with them. Do you think that makes him feel better? Hell, of course it does. Of course it makes him feel better. So why not do that? Find a friend and have fun. Your bonus, the one I haven't put on here, is just work. I love work personally. It makes me feel good. If I'm making a contribution and I'm trying to do things that will help you, I feel better. If in doubt, do some work, help somebody else, see what you can do. Anyway, those are my top tips for today. If you haven't already, please sign up to the Different Joy Club at www.differentjoy.com forward slash adj dash club um, and you can follow me on um, the website through email, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest and now Instagram. I know, it's a big job, sorry about that. Anyway, hope you're going to have a wonderful week this week. Take care, live each day and love fully. Bye. Do 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 do